Today is the official review of Tears of the Kingdom. And I figured it'd only be fitting for me to do this to go with the AeroPress Go, my hand grinder, and my to go scale. This whole setup right here, what you're seeing in this little section, is my everywhere coffee setup. I take this everywhere I go. I have a decanter just for water, but that's pretty much it. And so I'll talk through this method again as we go through. I didn't do the best talking through it last time, but today is all about Tears of the Kingdom. First things first, let's weigh out our coffee in the Timor Chestnut C3 Pro. That's what this is. Foldable handle, it's very compact and heavy and all metal, it feels great. And our very loud, I don't love this scale, but this scale is good enough. It's 30 bucks to go scale. It's durable, that's why I got it. Now, Tears of the Kingdom. What did I think of it? Well, I will tell you the first time I played it through, not through, but the first time I cracked into it and started playing it was at launch. I ended up purchasing it digitally even though I had a copy of the limited edition coming in, but I didn't want to wait. So I actually have two copies of the game. A limited edition, not well, it, the hard copy of it is just sealed in that big huge box, which I love. It's the only limited edition thing I have for my Switch and I love it so much. But anyway, I got that version. I started playing it right away and I ended up streaming it right away, which I think was a mistake. I should have actually played it more intimately. And that's why some of the magic that originally I thought I was gonna experience may have not been there. Coffee I'm using is from Steady State Huabel. It's a Peruvian coffee, pretty good. I, I don't mind it. Uh, nothing like that Honduras I was tasting earlier this month but anyway this is what we're dealing with right now I love that this just goes like this and then you can just take this off and we set this off to the side and we have all of our coffee right here ready to go so back to the review so yes I was playing Tears of the Kingdom on stream in fact when I first started playing it I got a little emotional I think that that was more just the uh not the awe, but the excitement that existed with the game. And I'll tell you, this game, right out the gates, just looks better. It's a marvel. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was like, how is this game a bigger, more robust version of Breath of the Wild looking better than Breath of the Wild itself? And I have my thoughts. I didn't look too far into it, and I'll share those in just a second. So this whole setup that you're seeing is all included. I didn't Bring the lid in here but there's a lid to keep it nice and tight but this is a little um, case that you can keep i think like 20 filters in i have a metal version of a filter that was released by them i don't really remember who released that but i have a metal one don't use it it's just in there so you just place this really simply in here lock it up and then from there you drain your water so i'll just put everything in here We'll just use this. You don't need to use a fancy kettle. You can just use a normal kettle. It doesn't really matter. I use my fancy kettle because I have the fancy kettle, but at my parents' house, as I stated in the last cup, I was using their just automatic tea kettle that had a, just a spout at the top. No problems there. This gooseneck is more for pour overs and this is a full immersion. Back to the review. So when I started playing it, I was getting emotional, I was like, this is crazy. I even teared up a little bit on the jump and the dive. I think it was more just because I was like, man, I'm back in this world again. But quickly did I realize that a lot of the things that I was experiencing in the game felt vaguely familiar. Um, and by vaguely, I mean actually very, very familiar. There was nothing vague about it. It felt like I was just playing Breath of the Wild. And for someone who was trying to create content around this, I did what every other content creator did at that time and started playing my Breath of the Wild save to get the audience ready for my transition to Tears of the Kingdom, which was a disservice to me because when I started playing Tears of the Kingdom, I realized very quickly that I felt like I was just continuing on my previous save file, which ended up causing a little bit of disappointment so to speak but I progressed through and kept playing more and more and more and as I played more and more I got more used to ultra hand and all the different abilities and then I discovered different aspects of the game such as how there's a whole version of the game called the depths which is essentially all of Hyrule except darker and you have to traverse this infected landscape that's very much so like the underground in or the upside down in Stranger Things and try to figure out how you're going to navigate that. There are lots of different things you can do in there to light your path. And that was one thing that I just, I think 
out the gates was a little bit overwhelmed by, which didn't end up giving me the most enticing experience. I didn't want to get in and explore the depths because there was just so much. It was so overwhelming. And so in doing so, I got lost in the details. And the details of the game, such as the depths, hunting through caves to find bubble gems so that you can uh, sell those bubble gems to basically, I forgot his name, Kinton's brother? I don't think it's Kinton. Is it Kinton? Maybe it's his brother. I don't know. So that you can get special armor. All this kind of stuff uh, seemed just overly tedious. And I was like, mm, I don't know if I like this. And so after about 30 hours of play, and I think three temples, I actually stopped playing. I said, you know what, we're done. We're done playing Tears of the Kingdom and we're just gonna move on. And that is when I released a video about how I just realized I turned off my timer and now I don't have a timer. So I have to do this kind of by, I think I have something going on right here, yeah I do. So I'll just give it another minute or so and then we'll do the swirl. That's when I realized that uh, I was disappointed with the game. And I started thinking, man, this just doesn't feel right. Fast forward to when I went to my parents' house this past weekend, and I was like, okay, let's finish Tears of the Kingdom. I need to finish Tears of the Kingdom. And I did, and everything changed. I fell in love with the game all over again. I played it handheld mode, not even docked, not even on a TV to see all the visuals. And on top of that, I got even more immersed in the story of which I had already explored a great deal about. So getting into the different things in the game itself that you end up having to do, one is you have to, oh, I need to scroll this first. I'm screwing this coffee up. Uh, one is you have to look and search for all of these memories or these teardrops, not memories, which is similar to what you had to do in Breath of the Wild. Again, something that played into this feeling of like, man, I feel like this is just a rehash. Also, there are technically temples in this game. You're technically searching through temples, but those temples themselves feel a lot like the divine beasts. Yes, some of them are a little bit more challenging to get through and the different bosses in there can be more challenging too it's not just a different version of ganon but but it still felt a little bit derivative and for someone who was looking for that traditional linear feeling which they never promised and i wasn't expecting them to I still felt like, hmm, there's an element of this that I wish was just a little bit different. And to date, I still wish that uh, Nintendo would release a version of Zelda more classic to the way we used to play it, which is this linear story. I think the linear story is just special and very, very charming. And it gives you this feeling of like, oh man, I'm adventuring and I'm looking to to save the princess whereas this specific one that the fact that you can just go any which way there's no sense of urgency right there's so many side quests a ton of side quests there's all these different story beats which ended up at first overwhelming me but now that I've finished the game and I'm going back into the world I'm excited to go to the different areas and explore more of the side quests because they look absolutely spectacular and honestly there some of them are a little bit weird but others are pretty thought through and end up getting quite complex and i'm like this is content this is great this is awesome and it's you know at first my criticisms were this is a world that i am very very familiar with it seems repetitive it seems derivative it seems redundant but then I realized that the amount of things that they put into the game, a complete game, mind you, um, it, they needed to do something like that. Because, you know, with Ultra Hand, which essentially is you can just build anything you want and fuse it together and make these monstrosities of machine, which people do all the time, or with fusing items, which I didn't love that mechanic, how you can make your weapon stronger by fusing items to it, but then you always have to do that. You're not just picking up an item. Again, I'm a sucker for the traditional way. Pick up an item, use the item, and go. I don't like breaking items. I don't like fusing and all that stuff. But anyway, like you can 
put stuff together and fuse, making arrows, like having keys eyeballs that you attach to your arrows and they become, you know, guided, locking on to a headshot immediately. Like that kind of stuff was super fun. And it created a gameplay that was very, very involved and you could get real creative with how you were going to attack or handle mobs and all this stuff, which I thought at first, again, was really overwhelming. But you don't have to do all that. You can just do the basics, make a weapon stronger, go in, smack, 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 lock on, shoot your arrows and call it a day. You don't have to utilize Ultra Hand to create monstrosities of machines and then destroy your enemies that way. Which reminds me that back in Tears, I mean Breath of the Wild, Magnesis, where you used basically your Ultra Hand, not really, you used the Sheikah Slate to move things that were able to be used in Magnesis, which I think they had to be metal. People use that to drop stuff on enemies. We didn't do that much. <laughs> not we, I didn't do that much. And so, you didn't have to really do that in this with Ultra Hand. But Ultra Hand as a whole did add a layer to this game that at first I thought was going to be a little gimmicky, but I very quickly was like, oh man, there are limitless possibilities. And just in Nintendo fashion, especially with how I feel about how they treat the Nintendo experience with the Switch, you could do it your way, however you want. Whether you wanted to get crazy with items or just go in swords ablazing, you could do whatever you want to destroy any enemy. That was pretty awesome. Now something I wasn't expecting is that during this playthrough of this game, I, well, was wrong. I was not correct when I said that this game was repetitive and I didn't like it as much as Breath of the Wild. I jumped the gun on that and you know what? That's par for the course. I get a little bit ahead of myself from time to time. That being said, this game really did a good job. And now I'm sitting here having to eat every word I said with chopsticks and then shamefully ask for a fork and finish the rest of it one bite at a time. Not my joke, but I love it. Got it from Jake and Amir. Shout out to them. College humor back in like 2007. But I look at these books here, which are my Zelda books, Art and Artifacts, Hyrule Historia, the Encyclopedia, even the complete official guide collector's edition. And I think to myself, man, there's a reason why I love this franchise. And I mean, I know I've shown you guys this before, but this specific one by Dark Horse Books, this is the making a champion Breath of the Wild version, which I can't open. But if I am able to open this, there we go. I can now take an orb out. Like, how cool is that? I've shown it before and I keep showing it as much as I can. It's like a subtle flex. It's so cool. Anyway, um, this game, I'm waiting for something like that. Dark Horse, get on it because I will buy it in an instant. I don't know if they put a little disc in there or some light thing, but that'd be kind of cool. Like an LED shining light. Wouldn't that be sick, Peach? Me? Oh, that's me, by the way. That's a little, like, thing that my uh, in-laws got me. Pretty cool. Oh, I look at this and I get so warm and fuzzy. Just D&D &D dice, Nintendo, Mario, Luigi. Oh, man, it gets me so happy. Thanks to all of you who are sticking with me through this Nintendo journey. From NES to next gen. That's kind of my new uh, thing. At any rate, getting back to the review. This, this game just wowed me. The story, I'm not going to get into any spoilers, but I'll tell you that as I progressed through the final dungeons of this game, I did them out of order on accident because I got a little ahead of myself. And the game itself actually had stuff baked into it that when you had conversations with certain key characters, even though you had completed what they were going to tell you to go and complete, they had very, very well formed, oh, you already knew this kind of thing? And it, it doesn't seem out of place, <clears throat> which is nice because I certainly went out of order. But this game itself really, really got me so amped up and actually is the reason why I'm so fired up for Nintendo. Because if this is the kind of game that they're going to be giving us, something like Tears of the Kingdom, granted it is just an anomaly people don't understand how they did it i don't understand how they did it but if this is the kind of stuff they're going to be giving us at the end of a life cycle of a freaking console i can't even imagine what's going to happen with the switch 2 or the next generation of the nintendo console that's coming out here in <clears throat> lord knows how long i just was blown away by the way that they wrapped up the whole game and then when i reflected back on the game itself i realized that 
Though I finished the very game and I completed some of the things that I needed to complete in order to get there, I didn't even scratch the surface on the content that existed within that game. Challenges, side quests, searching for more of those bubble gems, which I didn't get all of them, I only got a few, exploring caves because there's the depths and then there's caves you can explore which is where you get the bubble gems. Taking on enemies in very unique ways or even getting the Korok seeds which I think is kind of lame that that's still a thing but whatever I never loved the Korok seeds but it's a baked in thing and if you know how I feel about Studio Ghibli and Princess Mononoke the Koroks kind of remind me of those little forest spirit guys which come on we got it we, we all have to acknowledge that Princess Mononoke is absolutely the whole inspiration for something like Breath of the Wild as well as Tears of the Kingdom. If you haven't seen Princess Mononoke, go and watch Princess Mononoke and then tell me that Calamity Ganon or the, you know, giant Ganon pig isn't the crazy pig from Princess Mononoke. There's no way that it's different. So let me land the plane here when it comes to my review of this game and kind of sum up my experience. One, my experience was phenomenal. I started it in the wrong mindset. If I would have started this in the right mindset, which was I'm going to enjoy a game that has been worked on and is a sequel, a continuation to the very game that existed, Breath of the Wild. I'm going to play a game that is picking up where we left off. I'm going to play a game that is not new, except is plus, right? That in it of itself is the right mindset. Some people would consider it very, very elaborate DLC, of which I would say no, it's not, because as the game progresses and as you get to the end of the game, it's very, very clear that this game is different from Breath of the Wild. It is in the same world, it is in the same engine, and it looks very, very similar, and the mechanics are the same. But the game itself is very different. But I would say that it's a welcomed, very, very welcomed familiarity because it doesn't get in the way of your experience. And as I've learned over the past few years of gaming, when a game gets out of the way and allows you to experience either the story, the gameplay, or just the whole entire package, it changes and it becomes memorable, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. Like the game itself is familiar because of the way it looks and plays, which allows you to not have to worry about relearning how to play. Instead, explore the new ways to play, which I think is really valuable. I feel this way about Final Fantasy 16. Some people complain that it was an easy game. The combat became repetitive. It was extremely simple. You didn't have to try that hard. I thought, as I look back, yeah, that's true. But because of that, you got to do some epic things in combat because you really had low stakes. But more, the more important thing is it got out of the way of the story. And that, my friends, is something that this game had over Breath of the Wild. This had a story. And I will tell you that the whole game was fun, but the final act of the game was the most spectacular Zelda experience I have experienced thus far. I can honestly say that this game, Tears of the Kingdom, now that I've completed it, and it has shown me that it is so important to play something in its entirety and to not jump the gun to give it a review before you finished it. I can honestly say without a shadow of the doubt, though Link's Awakening will always be one of the top five favorite games of all time for me, Tears of the Kingdom has taken its place as number one in my heart. This game did it. It absolutely did it. It delivered, and the best part is, as a father, I could do what I needed to do. Play 15 minutes here, 30 minutes there, the kids are asleep, an hour here, everyone's taking naps, I'm on vacation, a couple hours there, and I never felt like I was lost. In fact, I put the game down for three months, and then I picked it back up and was like, where was I? Looked at a couple things, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm just going to start going down the story, and it doesn't make you feel like you've missed out or you've forgotten stuff, because you're like, oh, I just need to continue here. Once you get back into the gear of it, you're like, oh, I, I know where I'm supposed to go. 
I, I just think there's a magic in the game that I was not expecting. And I know this sounds like a wildly biased, glowing review, but honestly, I have talked about games I don't like before. I've talked about failed games. Splatoon 3, I didn't like. I thought it was lame. I started playing it, and I'm like, this is no fun for me. Uh, there, there are games I definitely don't like, but this game did it. And I honestly was not expecting this experience. After the beginning, and my mind jail I was in, I was not expecting to come into it and have not only a better time, but a complete transformation of my first impressions of the game. I can't tell you an experience that I've had that's similar to that before, where I had a first impression that tainted the rest of the experience. This first impression was completely eradicated as I finished and actually got through it. So if you're looking to pick up Tears of the Kingdom, I have a link below, which is an affiliate link. I make a couple bucks, so you're not giving 100% of your money to Amazon or Best Buy. You're giving at least probably 95% of it to Amazon or Best Buy, but the rest of that is coming to me, which is great. That is the way that I want to try to generate support here, is make the big companies pay me. I don't want you to have to. All you gotta do is get your eyeballs on this video, get someone else's eyeballs on this video, and make Google pay me. Make Best Buy pay me. That's the way we're going to do this. That's how we're going to generate the funds here and to keep this going. That's my review. It's good. I'm not going to give it a number score because I haven't developed a number score system yet, but eventually we'll try to do that and I'll put some together because I've always wanted to do that. Sounds good. You guys give it a number score in the comments below. Let me know how you felt about it and uh, finish my cup. My kid's not crying and we're done here. So let me know if you like this format, multiple angles, but most of all, did you hear it? Did you say it? Happy gaming.